Rick, uh, Rick Dickinson is the CEO and president of, um, of the Greater Dubuque Development Corporation. He is responsible for the administration of the Greater Dubuque Development Corporation operations. This includes implementation of workforce development and business retention and expansion projects. Rick is also the principal li liaison between the City of Dubuque and the State of Iowa on issues relating to economic development incentives. Please give a warm welcome to Rick, and I'm glad your photo is up here now and not mine. Dee, thank you for that uh, kind introduction. Uh, welcome all of you, and congratulations to the United Way for taking the initiative to have these kinds of conversations uh, with your community, because this is how things get done. I especially like to thank uh, Lois uh, for having such a wonderful staff. Uh, uh, Erica and Judy were very professional in making sure that I'm here on time and knew what I was supposed to be doing. So if, uh, if I fail, it's not their fault. I don't think any of us uh, can have a conversation about anything uh, today without uh, anxiously awaiting the completion of this election cycle so we can get back to talking about what's great about America, what's great about Iowa, what's great about our communities. And I think especially so being in Cedar Rapids uh, to witness the devastation of the Hurricane Sandra uh, to our friends, neighbors, and family in the East Coast. Uh, no one more than Cedar Rapids understands what they have just experienced and they have yet to fully understand and grasp what they are facing and you know. And I'm sure for all of us we, uh, we open our hearts and, and share our prayers with those folks on this All Souls Day to make sure that uh, they can walk the walk at least as well as Cedar Rapids has. My name is Rick Dickinson. I have the pleasure of serving as the president of Greater Dubuque Development Corporation, a private nonprofit group that was established in 1984. I'm not here to uh, lecture anyone. I'm here to tell you a tale of two cities, but it's not about Dubuque and Cedar Rapids. It's about Dubuque and Dubuque. If you remember the novel, famous beginning words, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was an epic of belief, it was an epic of incredulity. It was a season of light, it was a season of darkness. It was a spring of hope, it was the winter of despair. We had everything before us and we had nothing before us. We were all going straight to heaven. We were all going straight the other way. It was a time just like our own. Those words were written by Charles Dickens in the 19th century about England and France in the 18th century, and it is true today in the 21st as it was then. It certainly is true from the community I have the pleasure of working in today, which is Dubuque. In 1982, the worst recession since the Great Depression, until this one, there was no greater victim than a place called Dubuque. Highest unemployment in the United States, 23% unemployment. 25% of everyone that worked in that community of 43,000 people working as of 1979 worked at two places, one of two places. John Deere Dubuque works in the PAC. And by 1982-83, John Deere went from 8,000 employees to less than two and the PAC eventually was gone, closed forever, as you witnessed with the meatpacking industry here in Cedar Rapids. There was little civility in Dubuque in the 80s. Council meetings were a precursor to the Jerry Springer show, if you will. <laughs> Political food fights and people took great pleasure in getting that headline in the paper of making a fool of themselves. And things didn't change much. Just because we started an organization called Greater Dubuque Development, which was a Big Ten organization where everyone had a voice and no one had control, it didn't really change things until three things happened in the early 90s that I believe were instrumental in Dubuque's transition in its tale of two cities from what it was to what it is today. And those three things are, one, 
The citizens of Dubuque decided to elect talent to public office, and that talent stepped up. Secondly, those elected officials hired talent to run their city, to do the work. And third, most importantly, the citizens of Dubuque decided to support the talent that they had elected and that they had hired. And that community has never looked back. Now, you've asked me to talk a little bit about IBM, in particular, what is the workforce component that has made, a, made it possible for that, that, that national, international brand to come to a community that few people had heard of nationally and internationally, and I'll, I'll get to that. But the premise is this. We do three things at Greater Dubuque Development Corporation, and I believe, thanks to a wonderful staff, they do it very well. Those three things are business retention and expansion. It is our number one priority. We have staff that go out and sit down with over 270 local businesses every year, ask the same questions of each, using a database called Synchronous. To show you how robust that program is, Synchronous is used and available all across the state of Iowa for business retention calls. About 1,200 calls were made last year. 270 of those are in Dubuque. We're 3% of the population responsible for nearly 25% of all contact using that source. We enter that information into a database. That database becomes our Bible. It tells us who needs help, who has an opportunity for growth. We use the analytics of that data then to tell us where we should marshal our precious resources to be most impactful within our community. And because of those business retention and expansion calls, we call it info action. You give us the information and we'll act. We knew that the greatest challenge facing our business, and I suggest for your businesses as well, is talent. It's human capital, the human element. It's having people that have the skill sets necessary to make sure that as an employer they are profitable. And so we do our second component, which is workforce solutions. We have a partnership with the Telegraph Herald, Unique. The Telegraph Herald provides their website, accesstobukejobs.com, to us and it shares the revenue in a pay-to-play program that supplies over $200,000 a year to our organization to pay for our workforce solutions. Over 100,000 viewers every month go to that site to look for opportunities in Dubuque. It outperforms Monster.com two to one. The free site that's supported by our workforce development, it outperforms that site by five to one. And I'll explain to you in a bit how it was instrumental in our ability to recruit IBM to Dubuque. And thirdly, we do national marketing. And because we understand what our product is by our business retention and expansion program, because of the workforce solutions we've developed as a result of what our existing employers have told us, we are able to recruit companies like Diga, an Australian company recently uh, locating in Dubuque County. Uh, Hormel Progressive Processing, their new facility, it continues to expand in Dubuque, and of course IBM. IBM wasn't found by Dubuque. IBM found Dubuque. And that's how it usually works, folks. They hired a site locator who used the analytics of their system to determine who in this community should be narrowed down to 12 communities, then eventually six, then eventually three? And we came up on that, that, uh, that menu that they were looking for. The key is that we didn't blow it once they looked. <laughs> and they had three teams come to Dubuque. One was the, the, uh, the HR team. How in the world will we hire 1,300 IT professionals in a community of 58,000 and an MSA of 90,000. The, the other group was the operations. Uh, how can we be successful here? What's the climate uh, between the public and the private sector? Is this a place that we want to touch down? And then facilities. Where in the world will we put 1,300 people with state-of-the-art technology? And here's how it worked. When the HR team came, remember what I said about our workforce solutions? We knew that they would have concerns about where do we hire 1,300 professionals. And so we went to accesstobukejobs.com, did a keyword search based on the skill sets that they were looking for for their associates. And we were able to walk to the HRVP and plop in front of her 
a stack of 623 resumes. Not a labor shed survey, ladies and gentlemen, but names, addresses, phone numbers, and the resumes of over 600 qualified people. And we set it in front of her and she looked at the top resume, a farmer from Dyersville who went back to school to learn IT skills because he wanted to change the direction of his life. And she said to her associates on her left and her right, this is exactly what we're looking for. Yes. When people were looking for a facility, we had listed on Lois all of our downtown facilities because every, them, every one of them is a gem in the rough. Dubuque values its downtown. Our focus is downtown. Yes, we've, in, we've developed industrial parks to the west and to the south, and they are populating as we speak. But the primary focus is how do we maintain the heart and the core of our community in our downtown. And we had a building there called the Roshek Building. It was 250,000 square feet. It was in disrepair. A nonprofit group called Dubuque Initiatives bought it for $450,000, and we stuck $43 million into it to create the new center for IBM and other clients as well. But the key, because we have this relationship with existing business and existing employers and including existing financial institutions, well, we had the opportunity, not, able, not being able to say that it was IBM, we called a meeting with 12 hours notice, and every bank and credit union president in Dubuque came to that meeting. And we said, we need a $24 million line of credit to redevelop a downtown business for a company that will hire 1,300 professionals in our community. Now, first of all, to get banks and credit unions in the same room is an act of God in itself. <laughs> but the chief executive officers of each and it was a little quiet in the room when we made the ask. And then the city, because of the partnership we have between the public and the private sector, said, and we will stand behind the loan. And within 24 hours, we had a program that was going to work. And the operations people, not only did they see this unique partnership between the public and the private sector, because the food fights had ended. Jerry Springer went away. They went someplace else. And civility governed in city government in Dubuque, and they saw that, they experienced that. Not only did they locate 1,300 associates in Dubuque, but they selected Dubuque as their model for smarter cities. And so the relationship goes on. As I speak today, the mayor of Dubuque is in Australia sharing the news about how real-time information can be impactful in changing our consumption of electricity and natural gas, and how it can make our community a healthier community. And Get, make us, allow us to make better decisions on transportation so we can reduce our energy costs and yes, whether you believe it or not, reduce our carbon footprint. That's happening. What's the result of that uh, uh, landing of IBM? Well, they made the announcement on January 15, 2009 that they had selected Dubuque. It was 31 degrees below zero that day. The coldest day in Dubuque's record, and we introduced the announcement by saying this. Everyone said it would be a cold day in Dubuque before IBM came to town. <laughs> but they did. We were able to rehab, deconstruct, reconstruct the building there in the Roshek building, threw them the keys by June of that year for the first two floors of occupation. They are now occupying five floors of that facility. Not only do we do a deconstruct, reconstruct, but that building is a platinum lead building. One of the few in the world of a deconstruct, reconstruct. Sustainability is, passion, is a passion in Dubuque in all things that we do. And by the fall of 2011, they had reached 1,300 associates. And they have a $60 million payroll in our community. Dubuque is blessed by any standard. Uh, we've, we have accolades. Cedar Rapids have accolades, has accolades. I want you to know that I'm envious of Cedar Rapids products. I wish we were this close to the interstate. I wish we had 380. I wish we had University of Iowa in our back door. I wish we had the critical mass of several hundred thousand folks here. I wish, I wish, I wish. But see, economic development isn't about wishing that you had what somebody else has. It's about truly understanding what you have, what your product is, and how you can make it the best that it can be. 
Workforce Solutions. We have what we call Dubuque Works. A phenom in my office, her name is Sarah Harris, is our Vice President of Workforce Solutions. She heads up Dubuque Works. It's a very loosely structured umbrella organization where all the providers of workforce solutions sit down and we share best practices. We talk about what's working, what's not. We supply funds to back up, to shore up what they're trying to do. And one of the things that Dubuque Works is doing is Opportunity Dubuque. He mentioned that we've been testing for 17 years. And you know, if you take the same human being and you test them 17 years in a row, and if they've never gone to change their skill sets, if they never had the opportunity to enroll in a program, if they've never had a, an opportunity to try a new job and learn on the job, guess what? Testing doesn't change their life, it doesn't change their skill set. So we've realized that. We've talked to our employers. We've talked to our community colleges. We understand who the people are who are unemployed and underemployed. And design a program, which we call Opportunity Dubuque, where we sit down with these folks, we make sure that they have the communication skills and the math skills necessary for, say, a CNC training program. We don't want to set them up for failure. We work with the employers by taking these applicants to the place of employment to introduce them to the project because we don't want to sit someone in front of a CNC for the first time having completed a, a, an educational program at NICC and they find out, well, I don't want to do that. And we have the HR community sit down with these applicants to see, is this someone we would actually hire? Actually hire? Boy, don't stand up here if you have stock and feet. Um, if you actually hire them, would we hire them if they complete the program? And then we remove all barriers to their success, usually having to do with money. Tuition is paid. Do they need assistance with daycare? We'll pay it. Do you have a problem getting to transportation so you don't miss a class? We'll make sure that happens. Over 90% of the people that are graduating from this program are gainfully employed. Our employers have the talent that they need. These people's lives have been changed forever. Our community is stronger as a result and we have 200 people in line waiting to enroll in this program. And our employers are engaged, our educators are engaged, our HR community is engaged, and our community is better for it. These are things that make a difference. I told you about access to bukejobs.com within two weeks of that announcement on January 15th. 15 thousand people applied on access to for 1300 positions one size doesn't fit all I have the pleasure of working for a board of 40 people I think I have the best uh, best staff in the country in fact there's a lot of connections between Greater Duke Development Corporation and Cedar Rapids I took the job 17 years ago 1995 I found out just recently uh, that when I took the job, they also entered a guy interviewed a guy named Mark Seckman, and they hired me. And so a year and a half ago, uh, I went to the board and I said, well, we have a chance of correcting your mistake. And so now Mark is our vice president of national marketing, and he's a rainmaker for us. And before that, on the first week on the job in uh, 1995, I called a dear friend whose name was Mike Bluen, and he was heading up Priority One at the time, and I said, Mike, now what do I do? So there's real connections between our communities. Uh, as I say, I'm envious of much of what you do, uh, and, uh, and we steal from you on a regular basis. And if there's anything we can provide for you, we will. But because of this tale of two cities, Dubuque has made the decision to move forward to not wallow in failure, to not worry about being the greatest victim in the country in 1984. We believe we've chosen light over darkness. We believe we're in a position of a spring of hope for great things in the future. And I don't know that any of us are going to go to heaven, but we'll try, to, try like hell to make sure we're eligible. Uh, so I look forward to uh, visiting with you after the event. Thanks to the United Way. 
Uh, please pick up the glass I just dropped on the stage so nobody's injured, no work-related injuries. God bless you, and let's uh, keep our thoughts and minds on this All Saints Day for those victims of the hurricane in the East Coast. Thank you.